Hi, let's talk about four areas of your Salesforce plus AI. And the whole idea of this talk is to conceptually understand the process and the key components that you should think about. So the first of them is all about data context mapping. And the idea here is what information from Salesforce are you extracting and sending over to AI for processing and getting back, right? So this is the most important area. People in this space need to understand business concepts, business process, business entities, what do they mean? What kind of interpretation you want to draw out of it? If you're a business analyst, if you are someone associated with data, if you're an admin, really important for you. And the beauty of this is because it's conceptual, it doesn't matter what AI tool you use to get here. Similarly, the second part of this is the prompting itself. So now that you have this data, you have some grounding in Salesforce information, what kind of prompting do you do? What kind of ground rules do you set up? So you may be doing summarization of cases, of accounts, of opportunities, whatever. All of that goes into it. And we'll talk into greater detail in a little bit here. The third part of this is the actual request response, right? Now, all of this information is extracted from Salesforce. Maybe there is a trust or a security layer. We do that at GPT-5, other products do it too. And the idea is how do you actually mask information, send it to AI, kind of do all the handling of requests, error handling, models, temperature, all of that good stuff, get a response back and do something with that response. And the doing something with that response is the fourth part, right? It is the actual automation. We a lot of times lose sight of this portion, but this is really where all of this needs to start making sense. And the reason you see an arrow underneath this is because that's how you can conceptually think about it. You start with data and your business understanding of data in the process. Then you think about what you want AI to do. Then there is the sort of operational request response portion. And then there is the actual automation around it. So those are the four parts of it. Let's dive a little bit deeper into it. So in terms of Salesforce context mapping capabilities that let you extract information from standard, custom, managed package objects. Again, I'm going to show you a little bit of a demo from GPT-5 point of view, but this applies to all of them, right? Whatever solution you're using, that's, these are considerations you want to think about. The second part is maybe you have external objects from which you want to bring external data, right? core data, compatible systems. You want to bring data from this article, other or data compliant sources, right? And then there is what specific information I want to have the intelligence to filter this out. I want to send specific records, and maybe I want to send an account in all the opportunities that are not closed or not closed lot for an account 360. And then what specific field values I want to send, what do they mean, thing like. So this is all the data context mapping that you want to think about. Again, great areas if you come from a business process perspective, if you're a business analyst, data analyst, system administrator, architect, those kind of people, very important here. Let's jump into the second portion of this. This is really fun, which is where you actually start doing something along the lines of prompt engineering, right? And the idea here is, you can give prompt instruction and you want to ground them with Salesforce field or data. And what that means really is, grounding means that the data is embedded inside that prompt. So you can say, hey, generate me an email and address it to person's first name. So you can embed that kind of grounding. And I'll show you that in a little bit inside Salesforce. But that's conceptually what this means, right? So you've written a prompt that you're sending to AI. Think of it as a command that you're giving the AI. In addition, you can add what are known as grounding loads, and that would be your telling AI, hey, only respond back based on the information provided. Do not make assumptions, do not come up with your own version of truth, right? So you want to eliminate any sort of bias, hallucination. You want to make sure any lack of ethics is not there. So you can actually embed all of that. And I'll show you how we baked it into the product so you're able to literally just apply them when you're writing prompts. But you can always add them from in addition. All right, so that brings us to the request response. Super important. You may have heard the term trust layer, security, or all of that. And the idea here is that information that has been extracted and we map the prompt that you have, before it's sent to AI, you want your solution to mask this information. And we do that. We would mask information going to AI in terms of first name, last name, day of birth, um, SSN, license numbers, policy numbers, whatever. And you're able to specify that in the trust layer, right? What you're able to do is you're able to say, hey, I don't want to send anything where, you know, this customer's email address is just mask it everywhere. And what you will do is from GPT-5 standpoint, we will take it out and instead of sort of our GPT-5, it would just say remove that remove.com or something, right? So you you have the ability to do that. You can also mask sensitive data based on regular expressions or patterns. So you could say anything that looks like an email that looks like an SSM, looks like a driver license, passport, or whatever it is that 
may be unique and sensitive to your business. It could also be personal health information, things like that. So the one thing we do here also is that in this data mapping, you can also have a blanket allow list or a block list. So you can basically list out, hey, here are the 150 things we never ever want to send to AI. We don't want to send it. FBI, because we said it to me, we don't want to send it. Anytime your trust layer sees this, particularly with GPT-5, which is an app exchange package, we would take it out. We would basically mask all of that before it goes. Very important area to be aware of. And then once a response comes back, we would demask it or re-inject back that PII so that when it's presented, then your user knows what is the context, right? So that is the trick here. This needs to be, if you're looking at a solution, you want this 100% native in Salesforce, which is what we do. So if you just literally deploy the, our app exchange package, it has a built-in security here, trusted. You don't need to buy anything else. Just your regular sales cloud, service cloud, any industry to hope can work with you. Anyway, back to this, the entire request responses here. One of the considerations that you should think about is auditing, right? If this is happening and you have a solution, you want to have a very good audit capability to know what was sent, what was masked, all of that, because your infosec may need to see this, they may need that validation. And we will do all of that for that reason. All right, that brings us to automation. Super important area and often neglect because all of the conversations that I have usually are in these three areas. But when you think about automation, you want the ability for the response that comes back. You want your solution to update the response maybe in one or more field. And you want it to happen without writing code, without writing flows, all of that. And actually, if you do that in GPT-5, you can declaratively state, hey, update the case summary here, update the product for which this case was open here, update the account summary here, give me a version of uh, everything that's happened on this opportunity and bring that summarization updated somewhere, give me a sentiment and update it. So all of that kind of stuff you want to do here, very important. The second area is, are you able to invoke all of this stuff from flows and triggers? And again, that's really important from an automation perspective. You want the flexibility to do that. So we designed that as well, right? Like with GPT-5, any prompt that you create exposes invocable. So you can uh, call it from a flow, you can call it from a trigger, whatever you'd like to. Third part of this, which is very important is you may need to create tasks or event or other kind of record based on the response you're getting back from AI. And you want to be able to have that degree of permission. Really important. And the last point on this is all of this would be incredibly more capable and useful if you are able to expose this to Einstein chatbot or other external systems. And we support that. GPT-5 actually integrates directly with Einstein chatbot. So your chatbot responses can be actually generated through a combination of AI and RAG. But the point is, no matter what solution you use, you want to think about the ability to expose this capability of AI plus your sales for grounded data in a secure manner across various endpoints. So whether it's through chatbots, you may also want it on a community's website, right? You may want to expose it there. And again, we support that. You may want it inside your mobile app and Einstein chatbot supports that today. So if you have a third-party website, a third-party mobile, uh, your own native mobile app, the Einstein chatbot's newest version can be actually exposed inside it. And by virtue of that, your AI capability can be also published out. So that's the summary of all of this. I'll do a follow-up video where I dive deeper into data context mapping, prompt, request response, and this. Let me know if you have any questions or any thoughts about this. Thank you so much.